major scale. It's pretty much the cornerstone of Western music, both in terms of its popularity of use and also in the way that we, we think about and talk about music. I mean, everything gets related back to the major scale, whether we're talking about scales or chords or intervals. So it's a pretty important scale to know. Now, we're not just going to talk about patterns. We're going to get into what makes a major scale a major scale. We're going to get into the, the DNA, the blueprint, so that we can construct major scale anywhere on the neck, in any key, anytime we want. And that's what we're doing today on Ray Plays Guitar. And I'm going to try to do it as simply as possible. Let's get into it. The major scale. What is a scale? Scale is just uh, an organized set of notes. And that's all it is. You can take any grouping of notes and call it a scale. Now let's back up a second. The musical alphabet has seven letters in it. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And there, there's a whole step between all those notes, except between the notes B and C and E and F. Between those notes, there's a naturally occurring half step. Now, if we take the notes of the musical alphabet and just start on C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The resulting notes are a C major scale. The naturally occurring half steps between E and F happen to be between the third and fourth notes, and then G, A, and then B and C, that's between the 7th and 8th notes. So we have a whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half. And that gives us our major scale. This is a sound that should be familiar to all of us. Do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. Do, a deer, a female deer, Ray, a guy who plays guitar. Me, a name I call myself. Far, a word that rhymes with guitar. So if we simply play the notes of the musical alphabet starting on C, up to C, we just played a C major scale. But if we take this formula and start it from anywhere, let's say this note, G sharp, and play that same spacing of a whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, we just played a G sharp major scale. Now playing along one string, I use that technique a lot. I like to play along one string, but it can be cumbersome sometimes if we're trying to do other types of passages. So let's take a look at a couple different patterns that we can apply to access the notes of a major scale. Let's start with our first finger. We're gonna keep it in the key of C for now. So let's take our first finger and start it on C on the eighth fret of the sixth string. Here's our first note of the scale, whole step to the second, whole step to the third. Between three and four, there's a half step. There's a half step, but we're gonna put the fourth on the next string. So that's a half step, and then we have a whole step, whole, whole, and then a half. Well, it's a good idea to kind of know the notes that we're playing. What I feel is more important when we're dealing with scales or chords or anything really, is to be aware of the scale degrees that we're playing. Root, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Root, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, four, root. So this shape here, so we have every other fret for two strings. And then you move up one fret and you got, and we complete the scale with the half step. Now, we can do this sort of move. Instead of ending on our second finger, just slide that first finger up and play that same shape. Here we're at the B string, we would normally be here, but remember when we get to the B string, we gotta shift up a half step. And there we are. Go up another half step, we're back at C. Now, what if we started with our second finger? We have a root, two, third would be over here. 
fourth is right next to it. Half step between th three and four. Five, whole step to six, whole step to seven, and then a half step to eight. I like this shape a lot. Don't forget, here's the root. That means the seven is right here. So we can throw that note into this pattern. And what we wind up with is two strings where we're going one, two, four. That's fingers, one, two, four with our fingers. And then we finish it off with a one, three, four. We can take that same shape and move it up an octave. So that's the pattern starting with our second finger. Let's try starting with our pinky now. Root, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight are in the next string. Or root, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, and you can throw the root in here. You should be aware and be able to do it both ways. And know that there's a, or if there's a seven, there's a root a half step above it. Now let's go back and do that first pattern, starting with our first finger. Now when we get here, we can play that root with our second finger and play that second pattern starting here. Now, pinky falls on the root, we can start that pinky pattern. We put that all together. Now let's start with our second finger on C. But when we get up to the root with our pinky, let's do the pinky pattern here. We'll throw the seventh here. Oops, root on the next string. And we can start that first pattern. Root, two, three. Now this pattern, I like a lot. Check this out. Remember, seventh is here. So if we play all these notes together, the resulting pattern is symmetrical in the way that two strings are going one, two, four, one, two, four. Then we go one, three, four, one, three, four. And that's all in the same position. We do not even move. Then the next two strings, we just shift up one fret and do every other fret. And I like this area right in here. This is our root. This is a, a type of thing I do all the time. Pull off and then hitting that note on the second string. Picking the note, pulling off, and then hitting that. There's another thing I like to do, like hitting the root here, flatted seven on this string, and letting those notes hang over each other. When you have tight intervals like that, you get those little beats beaten.
to this area. Here we have a C on the fifth string. Well, if we start with our first finger, that pattern still works here. When you get to here, you can just sh shift your first finger over and do that same pattern again, or hit it with your second finger and play the second finger pattern. And then we can go below this. This is, this is the root, which means a seventh is a half step below, which is that note, which we can access here. Seventh, whole step to the sixth, whole step to the fifth. Whole step to the fourth, half step to the third. There it is. As long as you know the distance between the notes and what note you're on, you'll never get lost. You'll always have your footing. Suppose we started with our second finger down here. We get to our pinky, we could do the pinky pattern. Here's our root, seventh is a half step below it. Whole step down to the sixth, whole step to the fifth, whole step to the fourth. So we can throw those notes in the, into this position, half step to the third. And of course we can do that same thing up here. If we know the formula, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, or just remember, whole steps between everything except between the notes three and four and seven and eight, then you'll know how to construct a major scale. And then with three one octave patterns, you can access those notes all over the fretboard. Well, that was a quick rundown of the major scale. Leave your comments and your questions down below. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hey, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.